service of worship, and uh, the information on that is in your bulletin. This series of this year is Portraits of the Passion. So each week we'll be focusing on an item associated with the passion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I'll be having uh, my uh, class on the small catechism after uh, about noon time today in the Krieger room. Uh, a couple other things noteworthy on the uh, calendar. The Financial Peace University is continuing uh, to meet on Tuesdays and or on Saturdays. There are, two, there are options there for Financial Peace uh, University. And next Sunday, deadline for the uh, April 
which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in the office at the time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number. And there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid us on hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into the place and gave us the land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first fruit of the ground, which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God, and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all that the Lord your God has given to you, and to your house, you and the Levite, and the sojourner who is among you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalm of Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God and my trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His
going to sing Luke, the fourth chapter. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days, and when it never ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command the stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. We join our hymn at the top of page 500 bulletin. Sky 
come together. An eerie and awesome landscape. And so it was out into this wilderness that the Spirit of God led Jesus to be tempted by the devil. And the geographic location is not insignificant. Wilderness, wilderness signifies the human heart. And the human heart is the true location of the devil's onslaught. Somehow we've been taught, I think our mothers participated in this, they warned us against temptation being out there somewhere. And uh, they warn their children about the company they keep and bad influences. We associate temptation with a pill or with a bottle of booze or with a great amount of money or with someone else's body. And our mothers, when they warn us about those things, there's some truth to it. Those things do pose a danger. But the main reason we fall for those things is found here. The problem is inside of us. It's because of what's in here. And the tempter, the devil knows that. And it's the heart and soul where he directs his arrows. And what he does is, he seeks to get us alone or to find us in a place due to various circumstances where we are alone. So, the tempter wants to have his way with Jesus. He doesn't bring him to Bourbon Street. He doesn't take him to Wall Street. He doesn't take him to the shady part of town. All he has to do is meet up with him in the wilderness, the ultimate place of aloneness. And so the Spirit leaves Jesus intentionally out of the wilderness, knowing that the devil will find him here in order to test him. And so we observe the first of three attacks on the one being tempted. Jesus is fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. His body is weakened by hunger. And I think this is the one perhaps we have the hardest time relating to. Because how many of us in this room have ever really been hungry? You know, we, we, we've been fortunate, I think most of us. We've lived our lives during a time and in, in, in a place where we haven't known real hunger. A lot of people in us in this world still do understand hunger. They live it every day. But hunger is a terrible ordeal, and it renders the body vulnerable to disease, but it also wears down the spirit. You see. So the devil approaches it and says, if you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. First temptation, so basic, so earthy. Um, no urgent matter is a right and wrong. On the surface, no great moral dilemma. The devil doesn't have a prostitute standing in front of Jesus doing a dance. Turn these, he's hungry. Turn these loaves into bread. Satisfy the most basic of human needs. And to tell the truth, probably most of us would not have blamed Jesus if he had done this. He's starving. He's been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Give him some bread. He's held out for this long. Who would deny him a little bit? A little slip up. And this attack centers on our ability to rationalize and justify. The, the end justifies the means. You just look at the overall picture. Think of the greater good. Man needs to survive. Certainly God doesn't expect us to go hungry. Lust will be our little secret. I won't tell. But we think that way, or 
is the point. The issue is not the bread. The issue is giving in. And who you're giving in to. Sometimes it doesn't matter what the end result is. Your intentions may be very, very good. And you may wind up with a very, very wonderful result. But what we learn here is the way to get there is important. And if you sell out in order to achieve your goal, that's not so good. Does the end always justify the means? None of it means getting in bed with the devil. A business opportunity. An opportunity to get, get real rich real quick. Notice how the mind works. I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for my kids. I want them to have better things. I want my wife to have nice things. God will understand. Or well, maybe it's more personal. I'm in trouble. I need to get out of trouble. I'm in pain. I need to get out of pain. Maybe the drugs will help. After all, God doesn't expect me to suffer. It all makes sense to us at the time. But what you need to know is the devil never has good intentions for us. The devil, in league with the devil, things will never end well. In league with the devil, it will certainly be on the path to death and destruction. Jesus avoids all the avenues for rationalizing and self-justifying. He ignores the God-given impulse to feed himself because it would mean giving in. And so he sets the precedent. He appeals to the word of God, the sword of the spirit. And he speaks to the devil. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And then there's a second temptation. The devil leads Jesus up to a high mountain, shows them all the kings of the world, all their glory. The devil says to Jesus, all these I will give you and just fall down and worship me. You have to wonder, what did the devil show him? What did he see? Armies marching. Banners fluttering. Mass of people bowing down in adoration of their leader. Who gives commands, orders people around. The sit in the sea of authority. We think to ourselves, but I have used it for good. Give me that authority, I'll use it to help people. I'll do great things. No, you wouldn't. Not for very long. And you know how I can prove that? Look at history. And we all know the power for us. And that's for their own sinful nature. Our sinful inclinations are in need. When they get in need of that power, it becomes a destructive thing. We forget our place under God. Very easily. We forget we have to answer to him. So Jesus never faced obedience to the Father. He recognizes that all the power and authority belong to God alone. And that having power and authority is not worth having. It'll mean it bowing down to the devil. He says, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And then comes the final temptation. The devil takes him to the holy city, Jerusalem. To the top of the temple, and uh, the temple turret, 
And what's really interesting here is the devil speaks the word of Scripture. The Scripture reminds me, the Scriptures tell us the devil knows the Bible better than we do. And he says to Jesus, if you are the Son of God, cast yourself down from this high place. For it is written, he quotes a psalm, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you on their hand, and on their hands to bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. So what's up with this temptation? Turn religion into spectacle. Do what we can do for ourselves to secure them. And He's a Lord, says 
scriptures who knows temptation yet without sinning, and he struggled with Satan, and he prevailed. Sisters in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For hearts fully prepared for repentance and faith, to receive the gifts of the Lord's body and blood, and for the will to show forth in our lives the fruits of this blessed communion, let us pray to the Lord. In your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please be seated. We hear our call to order.
salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy God, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we love to magnify your glorious name, ever praising you and singing.
Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake our children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled to serve you constantly. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you. 